Hello, I'm Professor Barba, and I have a new demo for you. In this demo, I want to introduce you to Python functions. Functions are a clever way to break down complex tasks into smaller pieces, so it's more manageable. It is a bundle of code that you put together uh, because you want to reuse this, these, these sets of procedures or calculations. A function takes uh, uh, arguments as an input and returns a value. To define a function in Python, you use the keyword def. So here is like the simplest function that you can imagine. The keyword def, we're going to follow uh, the keyword def by the name of the function. This function, I'm going to call it do nothing. Do nothing. After the name of the function, you follow that with um, parentheses where you can place your arguments. But in this case, this function is going to take no arguments, so I leave the parentheses empty, and I end that statement with a colon. The following lines of code that are indented after the definition of the name are um, the calculations that you want to do. But in this case, I'm going to just write the keyword pass. It's a keyword in Python that means do nothing. So here is um, the simplest possible function that you can imagine in Python, but it has all of the required elements. It has the def keyword, the name of the function, the uh, parentheses, the colon, and then indented an indented valid line of Python. So note here that if I do type do nothing, I get function. It's a valid Python object. If I do type, do nothing, and I add the round brackets and execute, I get none. What happened there? Well, I am actually calling the function do nothing. That's the uh, indicated by the round brackets. And um, asking the type built-in function of Python to tell me what is the type that is returned by the function. In this case, since I don't have a return statement, it uh, returns type none. But most of the times I want to return a value, and so we need the return statement. So here is a possible other function that is going to return a value. We're going to use the keyword def, and I'm going to call it square foo. And this time I'm going to include an argument, I'm going to call it foo, and I always have to remember to end that statement with a colon. So the um, indented lines of code are going to take now do the following things. I'm going to define a new variable named bar and make it equal to two. And then I'm going to calculate a value that is equal to foo, the argument, and I'm going to use two asterisks to indicate the power um, calculation. And bar is going to be the exponent. And I'm going to do return value. So now we have a little bit of a more complicated function. I'm going to delete these two to make more space for my presentation to you. And I'm going to execute now that line, that cell. And I have defined this new function. So type of square foo gives me function. Type square foo with some value here, for example, five, gives me int. So the return value of square foo with an argument five is int. So indeed, if I just do square foo five, I get 25, the square of five. So here is a simple function. And I want you to note that variables uh, used internally in a function are not available once, we ex we, once we've called that function. So if I do bar and try to execute, I get an error because bar is not defined. Bar is internal to the function. So remember this, functions don't show how the sausage is made. So bar is unknown outside the function. All right, so I'm going to delete that to have a little bit more space and show you another uh, important property of functions. If I define bar outside of the function now and define a new function that I'm going to call, uh, say, bar power, and it takes an argument foo and now I'm going to do a result, um, I can use any variable here, equals 
foo to the power bar and return results. Okay, I execute that. Now, of course, of course, bar is known because I've defined bar outside of the function. Uh, result, however, is not known. See, result is not defined because it is internal to the function. The function doesn't show how the sausage is made. All right, but it's not a good idea to actually have that definition outside of the function. All functions need to be self-contained. So remember, be very careful. If you do this, it has to be for a reason. You want your function to be self-contained. It's generally a bad idea to use global variables. So let's do another example. I'm going to add a few cells here so I can scroll up and show you this function. I'm going to call it oof power foo. Remember the colon, and I'm going to do value equals foo to the power oof and return value. So what's going to happen there? Well, I'm executing that. Nothing happened. There's no error, even though oof, if you notice here, is a variable that I have not defined. Oof is not known outside or inside the function at all. But what happened? We have defined the function, so type oof power tells me it's a function, but we haven't called it. Now, if I call this function oof power with any number, with any value that I uh, give it as an argument and try to execute, now I get an error because oof is not defined. So. Uh, the important message here is that the error was not seen when I defined the function, because when I define the function, um, it's not actually executing the internals of the function, and I don't see the error. But when I, exec when I call the function, then those lines are executed, and I'm going to actually see the error. All right, I'm selecting too many things. And last, last thing is that if I, of course, Define now, I'm going to delete that to have more space. If I do oof equals something, and now I call oof power with any argument, that now executes because oof is defined. Um, let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's get numpy here into the game and define foo equals numpy array. Uh, let's do two, three, four, and now let's call let's call our old square foo function. Did I use um, that name? I think I did. Let's call it with foo. And now you see square foo has given me the square of an array. So um, it works with this different kind of argument now. And I could do a different kind of array now. Notice that when I defined square foo over here. I said this argument was going to be called foo, but I can use any variable here. So let's do um, bar equals numpy array. And let's do three and four. And now call um, square foo with bar. And execute it, and out comes the output. Uh, the lesson here is that the name of the variable outside of the function uh, that I'm going to use as an argument is not important. Once I send this object called bar as an argument to square foo, internally to that function, it's going to be called foo. That is the final lesson. Maybe I will give you a summary now. So def is the keyword to define functions, followed by the name of the function end that statement with a colon. Um, lines indented after the definition are what's going to be executed when you call the function, but none of those lines are executed on the definition itself. Internal variables are not available outside of the function and make your function self-contained. We didn't mention doc strings, which is always a good idea, and that is the um, lesson of documenting, documenting your functions for other humans to understand. In this case, for example, I should add this function 
takes the square of its argument. And this is a comment that will be available to other users of this, this function. It's always a good idea to use what's called doc strings, this message written between three um, uh, uh, tactics. Uh, and uh, you could define there what the variables are going to be for your function and leave a message for the future user of this function. I think that summarizes Python functions for you. And I hope it gives you, it gets you started. <laughs>